Tasmania's Andrew Wilkie is the independent federal member for Clark, and uh, we're catching up with him now. He's currently in Canberra. He's a former soldier and intelligence officer, and he's always held concerns over the issues of governance. It's been part of his, I suppose, his go-to. Last week, Mr Wilkie raised the stakes on Crown Casino and its suitability as a casino operator following the cancellation of its New South Wales licence amid money laundering scandals. Andrew Wilkie joins us live from Canberra to talk about Crown and money laundering. Andrew, welcome to The Informer. Thank you for joining us. No, it's a pleasure to be uh, pleased to be here and to contribute. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wilkie, you've been long advocating against Crown's suitability to hold a casino license. Does their admission around money laundering actually surprise you? And given their admission, what do you think motivated them to admit what they've been doing wrong? Well, I think the only surprise uh, is that they took so long to concede the possibility of money laundering. I mean, the evidence uh, is obviously overwhelming, uh, starting with that Aldi uh, freezer bag with what I, I guesstimate might have been one or two million dollars uh, of, of money in it. Uh, I think they would have been probably wise to have conceded earlier. Uh, if they had, they certainly wouldn't have uh, upset the, uh, the inquiry in Sydney as much as they did. I mean, they really wasted weeks of uh, hearings in Sydney by holding out that long. Uh, how is it that they actually have their licence to operate a casino in New South Wales revoked, right? But in Victoria, and again WA, they're still allowed to hold their licences. Same operation, isn't it? Look, it beggars belief that what's going on in New South Wales seems to be going on in isolation. Uh, I mean, for a start, much of the evidence that was uh, presented at the New South Wales inquiry was was evidence about misconduct at Crown in Melbourne. Um, and uh, I've also heard allegations of misconduct at their casino in Perth. Um, it, it beggars belief, frankly, that the Victorian government isn't all over this uh, and has uh, and had started some sort of effective inquiry of their own. Uh, I, I think this just goes to show, this is further proof that uh, Crown has political top cover in Victoria. Uh, I mean, no wonder the Victorian police refer to Crown Casino as the Vatican. You know, it, it's a law unto itself and not, not a place that Victoria police, uh, you know, should go. Um, I mean, I, I, I do acknowledge that the VCGLR in Victoria is finally, you know, almost kicking and screaming and it is something. But uh, the VCGLR is also totally discredited and can't be counted on to look into affairs of Crown. Um, for, I don't think we'll get to the bottom of things in Victoria until there's some sort of independent uh, and effective commission in, in inquiry. But whether or not the Victorian government would, would arrange such an inquiry uh, is an unknown. Uh, there is clearly a, a very cosy relationship between Victorian politicians, uh, both the government and the opposition, uh, and the Crown uh, Company. Um, they're going to have to have a look at, it, look at it sooner or later, though. Uh, Andrew, can I ask it from a slightly different perspective? The Victorian government and agencies like Austrac surely, surely would have been very much aware for a long time what Crown have been allegedly engaged in. Uh, so extend that. What does it say about the likes of Austrac and why do you think they have actually buried their hand their their heads in the sand around this issue of money laundering no one can run away from it you said it's palpable you can see it so why have they done what you think they've done look I, I, this this crown issue uh, in some ways is a, a a symptom of a bigger problem and that is the uh, almost complete failure of um, political oversight and regulatory agencies uh, throughout Australia at both the state and the federal level. Um, the obvious failure uh, is Austrac. Uh, I mean, I, I made the first allegation in the federal parliament of money laundering a crown more than three years ago. Um, I, I approached Austrac on numerous occasions. Uh, I've also gone to Victoria Police. I've gone to the Victorian uh, Gaming Regulator, the VCGLR. I've, I've gone to the Victorian Minister, the Victorian Premier. 
I've, I've gone to the AFP. I, I've gone to everyone and anyone. I've stood up in the parliament and I've given evidence. Uh, you know, I've, I've uh, revealed uh, images of Aldi shopping bags full of cash. Um, and no one, no one has done anything effectively um, until the New South Wales inquiry came along. I mean, thank God for the New South Wales inquiry. Finally, finally an inquiry with, uh, with a genuine intent to get to the bottom of things. Uh, I have, interestingly, I, I have uh, sought on two occasions in the federal parliament for the, for the federal government to arrange for a federal uh, royal commission of some kind because, because these matters go to so many agencies at so many levels in so many jurisdictions. Uh, but again, there's top cover up here as well. I, I, I think we should be quite alarmed about Austrac in particular. They're, they're proven to be completely useless. Um, I mean, there's a huge question mark over Austrac, but the federal government's not interested in uh, looking into that either. Look, I, I well remember your overtures, and I, I didn't realise they were three years ago, but I do I do remember you raising them. Uh, so, the, so the question now is, should Crown's operating licences be immediately suspended in both Victoria and WA, and as you say, pending a Royal Commission? And do you think we can get one up? Look, I, I think it's fair to say that, uh, you know, in my opinion at least, Crown is unfit to hold a licence to operate any casino anywhere in Australia. Uh, and it won't be fit uh, unless and until uh, it's deeply reformed. Um, so what's been revealed in New South Wales is, is uh, every bit as relevant to the Victorian government and the government in WA, uh, the current group of people, the current board, has shown themselves to be uh, either incapable or unwilling to ensure the uh, the company runs legally and ethically. Um, it, it, I make the point again, it, it's just unfathomable why the, the outcome of the New South Wales inquiry isn't a, a huge scandal in Victoria, at least. Um, but we come back to the same point, you know, Crown have had top cover, they've had top cover under a top cover under um, political, sorry, political top cover under a, a series of Victorian governments, both Liberal uh, and Labor. Uh, frankly, until there is some sort of effective inquiry into all of this mm. nationally, we're not going to solve the problem. Um, uh, hence, I've made the point, I've made the attempt twice in uh, Canberra for there to be a federal uh, royal commission. Um, federal government's not interested. Uh, federal opposition's not interested. Um, and of course, there's lots of reasons for that. Uh, one of which is that uh, Crown over the last decade has uh, donated, well, at least a couple of million dollars that we know of to the major political parties and political donations. I suppose when you pay donations at that sort of level, you expect a pretty handsome return on your investment. And it looks like uh, Crown gets that sort of return at the federal and state level uh, with the political top cover they've bought. With what you're saying to me, you'd have very little faith that even a royal commission would end the operations of Crown in Australia and probably its board members would not be facing any sort of uh, prosecution. Well, the New South Wales inquiry does, uh, does give me some confidence, should give us all confidence that uh, if you have a, a genuinely independent uh, inquiry with a genuine desire to get to the bottom of things, it can achieve things. Uh, I, I think a, a federal uh, Royal Commission or uh, perhaps a Victorian Royal Commission or Commission of Inquiry, uh, it, it potentially would get to the bottom of things. But I, I think anything short of that is unlikely to get to the bottom of things. Uh, we certainly can't rely on the, the Board of Crown to clean up the company. Um, I mean, you know, a lot of us have just sort of sat back and, and uh, been somewhere between shocked and humoured by the behaviour of some of the board members in front of the New South Wales Commissioner. Um, uh, you know, I, I think some of the testimony was just not believable. Uh, and the, but yet Crown had its AGM just recently and uh, there was you know, little change to the board. Uh, in an ideal world, do you actually think um, uh, that Crown... What, sorry, let me phrase that a bit differently. In an ideal world, what should happen to Crown and to its board that's overseen what, uh, it, these, these strategies and taken these actions for an awful long time now? Look, it, if it was up to me, if I was the decision maker, 
I would immediately strip Crown of its license to operate a casino in Melbourne and its license to operate a casino in Perth. And I wouldn't allow either of those two casinos uh, to reopen or for Sydney to open uh, until I was uh, supremely confident that the company had been fundamentally cleaned out and put in place a number of reforms uh, and safeguards to ensure it could operate legally and, and ethically in the future. Of course, whether or not those, uh, those reforms and safeguards could be achieved, I, I don't know. Um, there is a problem with casinos around the world. I mean, they are, they are normally associated with organised crime. Uh, they're probably the best place in, a, in any country to, to wash money. Uh, I mean, we saw this with the, the Aldi bag evidence. Uh, what happened there was, you know, a small group of men walked into a, into a gaming room, handed over what might have been a couple of million dollars of cash. The teller handed them some, some big gambling chips. Um, almost straight away, they returned to the counter, handed the chips back in. The value of those chips is credited to uh, their nominated bank account. And uh, in a matter of minutes, less than an hour, they have effectively washed millions of dollars without trace. It's so easy, even with a poker machine. You know, you go up and put $10,000 of notes into a poker machine, press the button once, go over to the, uh, the counter and ask for a, ask for a credit. And they'll, uh, you know, they'll give you a check or they'll put $10,000 into your bank account. I mean, it's laughably easy to launder money in these places. That's why they're a mecca for organised crime. That's why they shouldn't be allowed to operate in this country uh, unless they have the, the most stringent safeguards and until the community can have confidence that the regulatory agencies are effective. Uh, and uh, I make the point again, this whole, this whole Crown episode um, should alarm us because it's shown the uh, federal agencies like uh, the AFP uh, and Austrac, uh, Border Force too, with the you know Crown's plane bringing high rollers into uh, Tullamarine. Um, state regulators like the VC Jalar and uh, state justice like the Victoria Police, they have all been exposed as uh, either incapable or unwilling to crack down on Crown. So I suppose there's two, there's two levels to this then, um, as I tease this out. There's no way Crown should be allowed to operate, or in fact any casino operate in this country, unless the company is um, undoubtedly clean and until the regulators have lifted their game and can be counted on. Uh, strong words, and I'm very glad that uh, at least Tasmania's independent federal member for Clark, Andrew Wilkie, has the, uh, the courage to, uh, to tell us exactly uh, how he sees the uh, current situation over Crown. Andrew, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I trust uh, that uh, people who need to hear what's been said do get a chance to listen and to absorb what you've been saying because any right-minded person who loves their state, loves their country and, and wants to do the right thing and see the right thing done, it's important that at least we get a Royal Commission into this and uh, something positive is done for everyone involved. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for your interest in the issue and, uh, and that's the bottom line. You know, we need a Royal Commission uh, to look at all the layers of this starting with Crown, probably ending with the politicians and holding them to account.